So in that sense, I wanted to, uh, time is, is quickly passing here, I wanted to share uh, Master Shen Hua, uh, the last uh, 15 years of his teaching, kept harping on one particular teaching, which he drummed into our heads, and he said, Liu Da Zong Zhi, the six great guidelines. And over and over he talked about the six great guidelines. And what are these six great guidelines? The list goes, if, if you do them just straight off, is Bu zheng, bu tan, bu qiu, bu zi si, bu zi li, bu da wang yu. No, and you can do six no's, that's kind of harsh. No fighting, no greed, no seeking, no selfishness, no personal advantage. They're a pair. And then no lying. What in the world? Why those six? Why fighting, greed, seeking, selfishness, etc.? Well, the way I understand now, after chewing on these for so long, is these are the precepts, this is the shila step from what's called xin di, from the ground of the mind. And this arises from a gardening analogy, or the idea that the mind is like a garden. It's, it will gr it'll grow whatever we, whatever we plant there and whatever we f choose to nourish. So if this is the case, if the mind is like a garden, xin di, the garden of the mind, the ground of the mind, it behooves us to plant carefully the seeds that we want to harvest. So, let's say we want to avoid fighting, or we want to avoid killing, stealing, lust, lying, and intoxicants, and become, use the Buddha's wisdom to become a good, wholesome person. Then, from the psychological understanding of humans, then we want to look at our thoughts. What precedes an act of killing? A thought of fighting, self and others me and you, rights and wrongs. We're different, we're separate. To counter an act of killing, I need to watch my mind as it produces thoughts of struggle and contention with others, self and others. If I can catch the thought of fighting, my chances of killing are greatly reduced. So understanding myself as a psychological individual with this per perspective of the mind, if I can watch my mind, and every time I have a thought of self and others, rights and wrongs, me and mine, and winning over you being number one, and I can say, I'd rather yield. I'd rather give the benefits to others. You win. I step back. I'm fine. I don't have to be number one. Then the thought of fighting spontaneously subsides. So it's a paramita, it's a crossing over um, of the thought of fighting with the thought of yielding. So I yield instead when I see the fighting thoughts. If I'm not fighting, fine, don't struggle in the mind with no thought of fighting either. But if I can counter fighting with yielding, then the precept of not killing holds itself. Likewise, greed countered with a thought of what? Giving. A thought of sufficiency, right? Share the benefits. Thought of seeking, I counter it with a thought of contentment, having enough. If I can counter greed, the, sex, the second guideline, with a thought of giving and sharing, of generosity, then stealing doesn't arise. If I can counter a thought of seeking, discontent, seven-year itch, she's not as pretty as she used to be, I'm not as handsome as I used to be, so maybe I need to find another mate, partner, friend, whatever. Seeking, discontent, right? It happens. So what do you do? You say, ah, the Buddha warned about that. I'm going to substitute a thought of contentment, sufficiency, just enough. Nothing that I seek is mine. I can't hold on to it. I'm full already of this light and virtue. So again, contentment crosses over the thought of seeking, which prevents the thought of uh, the action of sexual misconduct. Okay, kind of see the parallels. Then the next two, no selfishness and no self-benefit, counters dishonesty and intoxicants. We lie to cover our face. We get high to change our states. If instead I say, no, no self, give the benefits to others, then those precepts don't arise, those broken precepts don't arise. And the last one is no lying, which was the, uh, the one that's easiest to break. So my time is, is really, uh, really uh, over, my talk is done. I wanted to tell one more story. Um, while bowing on the highway one day, we were near Santa Barbara, myself and the other monk, and uh, we noticed just, just before lunch, bowing down, 
Over on the right side, there was a guy, and he had a top hat, it was interesting, with a feather. And I saw him and I didn't see him. He was gone, just like that. And then, again, later in the afternoon, he appeared behind a car over on the left side. And it was, I didn't think, I don't think I, never mind, pay no attention, you're supposed to be bowing. So just keep bowing. You know. The end of the day, poof, here's this guy. He's got jet black hair pulled down in a ponytail in his back. And he's got this black fedora with an eagle feather. And he says, very stern, he says, fellas, he said, I'm from the Red Bud Sioux Nation. I'm a Native American. And my spiritual teacher, my medicine man, told me to come give this to you. He saw you bowing. He says, you're neat. You know what I mean by neat? What? He said, you guys are slipping right through. Slipping right through. He says, yes, my teacher teaches us when you're neat, you don't have any hooks. You're not hooking. Your eyes aren't hooking. Your ears aren't hooking. You're neat. You're slipping right through. I want to give you this blue corn sacred to our people. We're going, huh? Sure. Uh, blue corn? You don't eat it, right? No, no. We looked up. He's gone. The guy was gone. Just like that. So what was that encounter? I think when you can catch those six guidelines, no fighting, greed, seeking, selfishness, personal advantage, and no lying on the mind as thoughts, then you're way less likely to kill, steal, lust, lie, or use intoxicants. And somehow we become neat and slip right through. So may all of you bring forth the great Bodhi resolve. May we all together become neat and slip right through. Omi Tofo. I just listed the six guidelines and if you think about the marketplace and the world of <coughs> competition that you outline greed fighting seeking selfishness benefit and dishonesty would be the middle name of the marketplace <laughs> can you imagine any company setting itself up and saying actually we are very generous we are not seeking for self we don't want our brand to be known individually we're not after profit and we're totally honest that's yesterday's business they've already closed their doors they are not going to succeed in the marketplace so if that is the case if you accept that proposal then um, my question would be, do we clearly understand what we're looking for in the spheres of our lives? I would suggest that the monastics here in the room, many of us, have left home precisely because I didn't want to spend part of my day fighting, greeting, greedy, being, you know, seeking for more and more and more, being selfish, etc. So I entered the Wei place, the Dao Chang, and I left the marketplace, the Shi Chang, and the Shi Chang and the Dao Chang. The Bodhimanda and the marketplace seem to have diametrically opposed views. So my question is, can you, when you're not working for a company, and that's, as, as we heard, that's legitimate. There, it, you want to make money. It's a good thing for the marketplace to be able to turn its wheels, to generate profits for the shareholders and for the employees. That, that's a wholesome thing. But can we leave that at work when we come home? If when we come home we say, actually here I am not living by those six guidelines. I'm really aspiring personally among my peers, among my, my family, my children, my spouse, that I am genuinely identifying away from marketplace values. Instead I'm picking up the values of the Tao Chang, the Wei place, the Bodhimanda. Then I think we, although it's a bit schizophrenic, still at least we can get through the day without having to feel like, gee, I'm at the workplace, I should be kinder, or I'm at home and I should fight more, you know, crossing those boundaries. Thank you. Thank you, Totus.